Welcome to this overview of the Vantage Equinox camera widget. The purpose of this widget is to facilitate live video viewing from fixed view surveillance cameras. More extensive use of surveillance cameras such as viewing recordings and pan tilt zoom control is left to other interfaces such as computer based controls. Now there's no analog video path to the Equinox interface so only IP streaming is supported but that doesn't necessarily leave analog or CCTV cameras out of the picture as there are an abundance of IP servers designed to take analog video signals and code them and stream them over Ethernet. These IP servers may be in the form of standalone servers or the server may be embedded in a digital video recorder or DVR also known as a network video recorder or NVR. We'll start our overview by assuming that there are cameras available for viewing but none have been defined yet within the Vantage system. So as we enter the Equinox interface here, we see no camera. Diving to the full page view of the widget doesn't change that, but from here, we can enter the editing mode where we can add cameras. First camera that we will add is a standalone IP camera made by Axis, one of our premier partners. As you can see, there are several premier partner cameras available to choose from. First thing we'll do is we'll change the name to reflect on the view. I'm going to call this parking. Then we'll change the IP address. Now a word about the remote IP address. This is required in order to view cameras through the internet via your phone or tablet as opposed to the local area network that we're demonstrating today. For this to work reliably, a static internet address or dynamic naming system is required. Port forwarding, DMZ setup, and other networking issues need to be well understood by the person setting up the cameras for remote access. Additionally, a remote IP address for the controller is going to need to be input within the setup of the interface so that this Equinox app can connect to the controller which serves up the data, the content for the app. Now, access is already selected, so let's move on. The other options we have are format, resolution, channel, and frames per second. When we have a choice, which is often the case, between MJPEG and H.264, I highly recommend the MJPEG. While the H.264 is designed to reduce recorded file size and bandwidth, its encoding and decoding are quite intensive and as a result will cause the image to lag. Now next we're going to select a suitable resolution. I'll go ahead and keep with the highest available option. This can be changed later if we need to experiment with image quality versus performance on a high traffic network if that becomes a concern. And then channel is an irrelevant parameter actually for standalone IP cameras so we'll ignore it here. And we'll move on to the final parameter that we see here which is frames per second. And typically the 5 to 10 frames per second is perfectly adequate for the purposes of viewing surveillance cameras and selecting these values will lead to less performance degradation as we might see with a higher frame rate. And this is just covering the parking lot. I'm going to go ahead and go with a minimum of five frames per second. Now, there is something we don't see here. We need to scroll down. We find login data. Most IP cameras will require authentication in order to view. The same name and password you use to view this camera through a web browser need to be inserted here. Now, once we've finished this, we can touch the check mark we've defined the new camera, we've added it, and now if we leave the editing mode we can see the camera that we just added. Our next example is an IP server enabling us to view analog camera feeds. This particular example is of an IP server embedded within a Snap AV NVR. Back in the editing mode we add another camera. We'll name this camera storage representing the area that it's viewing. We'll enter the IP address of the server. Again with the remote IP, we're going to leave that blank for our purposes today. Model, this is a Snap AV wire path. Format, I'm leaving it in JPEG. Highest resolution actually supported in this particular instance, these cameras, is 320 by 240. Now channel does have significance here and that represents the number of the camera that is connected 
There are multiple cameras connected. The first one is channel one. That's the one that we want. I'm going to leave this as five feet per second, frames per second as well. Now the login data to this is different, so I need to put that in. And now we've defined our second camera. I have one more camera I'm going to add. This is a hall camera and has the same IP address because it's the same server. Everything else is the same except the channel. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 10 uh, frames per second. That gives me a little bit smoother action in the hallway. Now, we could do all three cameras that I have connected this way. Uh, well, let's look down here. Login data is the same. That's fine. I'm going to leave the third camera that I have connected, and we're going to do that in a different demonstration. Now, as we exit the edit mode to the full screen page, we can either use the selection ribbon or the swipe to be able to see the multiple cameras. Let's go back one more time to the edit mode where we will examine the webcam option. Basically, adding a webcam is adding a generic device unlike any of these other options. And the other options, in addition to the IP address, we need to understand and add additional parameters to create a URL to access the camera. But with the webcam, we need to know the URL and we will put that right here in the IP address. So let's demonstrate how we do that. I'm going to go to a browser for the NVR. I'm going to select the camera that we want in my Chrome browser. If I right click, I get a copy image URL. So as I copy that and then go back to Design Center and paste that in, I've now created the entire URL. Everything else will be ignored because of the webcam device. So now that we have that in, we can go and take a look. And it is there. Let's just go in and make sure that we have a name for it. So name and URL and model webcam are all we need to create that. And then remember that the order that we show these in for the particular profile is the order that they will be presented. And the very first one in the list is the one that will be shown at the dashboard layer. So I'm going to select that for what I see at the dashboard layer. As an alternative to what we've done by adding cameras with in the Equinox interface, we can also add them within Design Center. And you can see now that it shows up if I look at my editing options. But there's a difference here. That lock tells me that that is locked for deletion and for editing. Now I can deselect it if I don't want to view it in the current profile, but it is always going to be here. Now, one of the reasons that we might want to do this atom within Design Center. First off is that it allows us to have a permanent uh, record of where the cameras exist within the profile, within the project, uh, within the project tree. And the second reason that we want to do this is that if I have a multi-channel NDR, it is easier for me to create one camera and then duplicate it. I can do that by copying and pasting. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then all I have to do to the copy is change the name. And then I have to change the channel. But notice that everything else is the same. Same with the third camera, we change its name and we change it to channel 3. Now you can see how easy it is for me to create multiple similar cameras within Design Center, which is one of its advantages.
Of all the current widgets, the camera widget might be the most volatile at this point, with industry trends such as OnVIF and changes by manufacturers as to how they handle interfaces to their cameras and servers. Vantage recognizes the need to keep on top of these changes and will attempt to respond as quickly as possible. If a premier partner's newest products vary from how they handled things previously, your best bet for now is to determine the complete URL for the camera access and use the webcam option that we showed you. We'll update our information as things change. I hope you'll recognize the camera widget as a high value application for the Vantage interface. Please feel free to contact your Vantage dealer for assistance, and if you are a Vantage dealer, tech support can answer your questions. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.